Let's take a look at my fleet, where I'm planning to go with everything, and how I pick the ships that I'm kind of interested in and want to end up owning. And if you're looking for a buyer's guide, you might want to move on down the bus. That's absolutely not what this is. So it turns out I'm completely out of sleep. There's none in the house and the shops aren't open, so I can't get any more. Uh, so I thought it'd be best to make a video with you guys. I made that buyer's guide comment intentionally. I did a video a couple of years ago on how I'm not interested in buyer's guides and I won't make them. The closest I could ever become of being accused of doing that is probably when I say things like, look, if you're fond of a smooth gaming experience, you don't like bugs and you want your game polished and finished, Star Citizen probably isn't for you right now. And that's it. When it comes to me buying ships, it's a question of, can I afford it? Still feed myself and buy everything else that I need to buy. If the answer to that is yes, I'll get the ship. If the answer to that is no, I don't. I'm not interested in maximizing bang for buck or comparing things. But then, as you'll see as we go through this, I don't always apply the same logic either. And that's just part of having a hobby. Let's take a look. I'll show you what I mean. This is it. The Badger's Grand Fleet. And the one that we can get out of the way right at the start is the Steve. Bottom right of your screen, this is a referral bonus. It's got LTI. Currently, I have a CCU up to the X1 velocity that I haven't yet applied. Other than that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the ship, but there are a couple of possibilities that we'll talk about as we go through the rest of the fleet. I, I have to start just up here, above the Pisces, with the Constellation. Now, I don't remember the first time I saw one. What I do remember is, for as long as I've played Star Citizen, I've wanted one. And it was one of my first major upgrades. I actually started off with the Aurora as the base pack. I went very quickly up through the Avenger Titan, up to the Comet. And the reason for that, for me, seemed simple at the time. It was that the ship just seemed to be the game distilled into one package. You had a cargo hold for a vehicle, so you would get on your ship and you would fly to a planet and you would land, get in the vehicle, go and drive around. And at that point, along with a little bit of combat, that was pretty much everything that you could do. So the constellation just captured it for me. Crew size of four is perfect for the number of people that I used to play with. And of course, the loner at the time for the tourists was the Andromeda. So lots of missiles, lots of guns, two turrets, lots of fun to fly. Now, I went for the Taurus purely as a financial decision. And when it came out, at the time, I was playing a lot of Prospector, refining materials, and then having to transport them around. So the increased cargo in the Taurus fitted beautifully into the gameplay at the time. Right now, I don't fly it a lot. And I can't rule out that it's kind of dropping down in how much I enjoy it. But to be honest, at the moment, it doesn't fit in with any of the gameplay loops that I do. If it did, there's much better choices in my fleet to do that thing. So at the moment, it spends a lot of time in the hangar. But I'm going to get, leave it for the rework and see how it turns out. My Vulture is actually built on top of the referral bonus for the Gladius. Um, so when you get to a certain number, you get the Gladius given to you. And I know that's going to anger some people because that may not be the way that you should build on those. But... It was a content creator decision at the time I wanted to do another How To Not Suck, the series that I do onto the professions once we had significant salvage in and use that to get that series done and then move on to whatever I wanted. But actually, the more I fly it, the more I'm falling in love with that particular Drake aesthetic, although I'm not a Drake fan in particular, and also the gameplay loop, especially now they've changed the vulture so that everything goes into that depot. I'm not having to get out of the seat every two SCU to move boxes around. I can fill the ship up, move all the cargo, and then go from there. I'm quite enjoying it. So the likelihood is, once I've done that video, it's going to stay. Especially with how good that best in show skin looks on it. It's a really, really good looking skin. She's staying for the time being. The CAR is my 
bunker ship. Now, Karen got this me as a Christmas present. I'm sure he won't mind me saying, um, with that beautiful concierge blue livery. Um, absolutely love that ship for a whole bunch of reasons. It's got food, drink, and med pens on it, and I'm really bad at remembering to bring those. It's also got that tier three med bed for every time I get shot, which feels like it's a lot right now. Um, and it's also exceptionally quick. It's nimble. It can use cover to its advantage. It can get close to those bunkers. And it's just so quick getting in and out of atmosphere. Now, I'm kind of anticipating as the game goes on that the larger the ship, the more that going in and out of atmosphere will cost you in terms of wear and tear, which makes sense if you know anything about space travel. Even the realistic stuff right now. So... The idea of having shuttles as your go-to gives them a definite place within the game and fulfills my hope. In. Uh, but the C.A.R. is staying for the time being. I have no plans of changing it um, until maybe we look at some of the larger medical ships that are coming in the game that I'm keeping my eye on. Big shout out to Del Kenobi for the Sulen, the alien ship in my lineup and what I think is probably one of the most accomplished, if not the most accomplished alien ship they have released to date. Previously, I really enjoyed the uh, Talon Shrike. I thought that was really good fun, but the Sulen's just on another level. For me, it's the ideal premium starter for people who want to use their ship as their base of operations. It's no slouch in combat, but it has that feel, once it's landed, of almost a homestead. You come in, you come in on the ground floor, where all the components are, all the grimy stuff, you take off your mission kit, you put your weapons in, you move up to the residential deck, feeling like you actually live there, in the same way that you would enter your house. You sort yourself out of the shower, you have some food, and maybe you go and spend some time sat in the pilot's chair, up top, admiring the stars, chilling out before you head to bed, ready for the next day's adventures. It's so, so cool inside. It doesn't fit to any conventions. And somewhere on the screen, there will be a link to the video that I did. If you want more thoughts on the Sulen, that's your click. The Retaliator base was a gift from a very generous uh, sponsor. I suppose we call him. You know who you are. Thank you, buddy. I love the Retaliator's interior. It reminds me very much of a World War II bomber, where everything's very compact, or the walkways are small, there's turrets spread out all over the place. You've got people fighting it at all different locations, but you're also walking around. You can see those torps through the windows. You can even walk in and around them if you really feel the need to. I, I like that feel in it. Now, obviously, this one's the base, so I've got the bomber as a loner for the time being, but I'm probably going to stay with the base just to see what they do with the modularity obviously it's going to be cargo base for this one there are other modules announced and hopefully they'll come up with a few more really interesting options so the retaliator base stays at least until we see how the modularity works and then i'll see how i go from there but it's efficiency in combat with those ridiculous size nine torpedoes can't be overlooked so it might be that for my pmc side of stuff that maybe i'll be doing when the game releases the retaliator base might be my go-to for that you don't want to hear me talk about the Perseus, do you do you well tough because come here i love that ship i really really love that ship Now, I can't put my finger on precisely why. There are a lot of things vying for that very special reason. But, if you press me, I think it's because it strikes me as having very traditional ship design. If you look at the turrets, the turrets wouldn't look out of place on a modern battleship. If we design one nowadays, the bridge is centerline midships, exactly the same as you would expect with a warship. It's got very traditional lines, and it puts me in mind of the ships that the Germans were developing, like the Tirpitz. Now, the Tirpitz was designed to go after convoys. U-boats and stuff were preying on Allied shipping, and 
they forced ships into convoys. Now, the reason for that was, while submerged, U-boats couldn't go very fast at all. The destroyers that were in the fleet forced the U-boats to stay submerged because the destroyers would outgun them massively if they came to the surface, meaning that all the ships in the convoy only had a limited threat window before they would be past the U-boats and opening up from them. In, in terms of gaining more distance and making themselves safer and safer with every passing minute. Into that mix, you throw something like the Tirpitz. The Tirpitz goes into that convoy. It is faster than every ship in that convoy, apart from the destroyers, but the destroyers are no match. They will be destroyed in short order by a ship that powerful with very little answer to anything that the Tirpitz could throw out. Then, with all of its turrets, with its secondary weapons, and with its huge speed advantage, it would take the convoy apart, piece by piece, at its own leisure. At least that was the intent for those ships. For one reason or another, they were never really used to their full potential. But I feel like something like the Perseus would be extremely effective for something like that in Star Citizen, especially when you're talking org v org combat the ability to get in disrupt people's backlines because it's such a powerful ship it's got some of the strongest armor for any ship its class if not the strongest armor for a ship in its class it's going to need quite a dedicated hunting force to come and find it and take it out which if you're forcing your opponent to commit much more resources to deal with you you're having a positive impact on that conflict. So the Perseus is going to be in my fleet. I'm not put off by the fact that it doesn't have a med bay. I know from working on frigates and destroyers in my own career and then much later on larger ships like landing platforms and carriers that the smaller ships don't have that advanced medical facilities on board. Serious casualties will need to be transferred to capital ships so this, to me, feels very much in keeping with ships of this purpose. And of course, I have the Thundercloud paint, which, again, thanks to Edison for sorting that one out for me um, and securing it for me so I could get that from him. Um, it just further reinforces the look of um, World War II raiding vessels. It's so, so good. The Perseus is here to stay. That's the end of that CCU chain, and I'm not taking it anywhere from there. And I cannot wait for that ship to be released so I can bring you guys a Naval Officer Reviews uh, section on it, and we'll talk about that ship at length. It's also going to be kind of cool to have you guys in the community come and either crew my Perseus, or bring your own, or come on a friend's Perseus. We will terrorize the PU when that ship is released. I'm so excited. Now, there's a reason I've left the C1 Spirit until the end. I will admit, the only reason I picked up the C1 Spirit was it was part of a CCU chain that took me from uh, the Anvil Hawk, the bounty hunting ship, all the way up to the Reclaimer. And we'll have a look at that chain in just a second. I just want to talk about the Spirit a little bit first. Uh, when I first got it, I thought, yeah, okay, fine, I'll just have that. I had the Hawk, which was in my hangar doing not a lot. So I was like, well, okay, I'll have the C1 in my hangar doing not a lot. However, the more I fly it, the more I enjoy it. There's something about flying it. It's one of those ships that, on the face of it, the aesthetic, I can appreciate that it's a pretty ship. But... For me, the real appeal of this ship was how it felt when I was flying it uh, and moving it around. And there's something about that that just speaks to me about the C1 in a way that it probably hasn't happened for a lot of the others. Um, I find the Sulen still difficult to get to grips with because of the way it lands. The Connie Taurus is really satisfying when you land it, but you do have to be careful that it doesn't suddenly go nose down. Um, the Retaliator Base, I don't fly into atmosphere a lot. The Pisces is just so forgiving that there's really no satisfaction when you fly it. And the Vulture, again, only tends to stay in space. So there's something that, I'm, that is really growing on me about the C1. 
that being said, let's look at where I'm going with that. A somewhat messy screen I'll give you, but basically read it like a book. Left to right, top to bottom. And there's a reason the ships have been separated out. So from the C1, I go to a Cuddy Red, to a Vulture, to another Taurus, and then to the Vulcan. Now these three ships on the right hand side, the Vulcan, the Medivac, and the Reclaimer, are ships that I'm really interested in. And they are what I've been told are called stepping off points. So, the idea is that I won't put this plan into action until we have the Vulcan in, because I'll apply all of the upgrades to the Vulcan, fly the Vulcan for a bit, see if I enjoy it. If I do, I'll keep it. If not, I'll then go up to the next ship that I'm really interested in, which is the Apollo Medivac, and so on till we get to the Reclaimer, or I want to step off with another ship that I'm really enjoying. So, why the Vulcan? Well, I really like the idea of its gameplay. I like the idea of coming in to support. I know a lot of people like to focus on either making money or they want to focus on combat and getting in there. I think that repair, rearm, refuel pilots are going to be a bit of a premium and the Vulcan is the ideal entry ship in order to achieve that. Um, it's got that fun of drone gameplay, so it's probably going to be one of the smallest, if not the smallest ship, um, that will enable us to muck around with drone gameplay, at least for now. So, that's my thoughts on the Vulcan. We then go up through the Scorpius, the 400i, and the Mercury Star Runner to the Apollo Medivac. Now, one of the things I used to do an awful lot in things like Armour 3 was I would do an awful lot of things like um, combat search and rescue. I love the idea of a small elite team dropping into very dangerous situations not to solve it and win the war and do whatever you see in the movies but to go and get people people that are down people that think that there's no way out for them that put a beacon up on the off chance then get a very practiced very competent crew to come down and rescue them and the medevac for me ticks that box now i might find i can't achieve that with the number of crew on it and that's fine that's why it's a stepping off point and not the end goal, but I do want to give that a go. I also love the fact that I'll be able to customize the med beds that we have, um, so I can make sure that we bring the right tools for the job. It's then up through the Starfarer Gemini, up through the Valkyrie, to the Reclaimer itself. And look, the Reclaimer, I remember going into one of the halls at IAE, and it was when it was an art corp and it was ages day obviously to have the reclaimer in there and you, you came in off the lifts you went down some platforms onto where like the new hotness was and then down again onto the show floor and there the rest of the ages ships and i remember going in there and i wasn't really paying attention i was just running to where i wanted to go and i remember at some point on the main show floor suddenly realizing that what i thought was the ceiling wasn't the ceiling it was the Reclaimer sat above me and it was so big that the show was taking place under it. Which is mental. Um, the way it settles into its landing gear is great and I really like the idea of a small team, again, five people, having all of their defined roles, being able to do their salvage, but also being able to switch out between them so if you don't like your hull scraping you go to drone gameplay or you can go and be the claw operator and go and shift cargo around um, or you can fly the thing for a while so even within salvage you had loads of different jobs that you can do and that has only been confirmed now that the reclaimer is able to do multiple forms of salvage I'm really liking that ship. And yes, there's a lot of work. Yes, there's things they're going to have to revisit. And a couple of people uh, in one of my live streams, um, I stream every Sunday, by the way, um, 9 p.m. That'll start again in the new year. Watch the channel for that. But though they were saying that they didn't like the movement around the ship and how they had to access multiple elevators to move from A to B. I actually quite like it in the Reclaimer. I think it's part of the charm. I think that it shows that the ship's main function is salvage, not ease of not ease of transit around the ship. 
um, because that's secondary to it being able to do what it needs to do. If it takes you an extra elevator to get somewhere, then, you know, tough sort of thing. I actually quite like that design, design aesthetic. I, I think it's incredible. Um, what actually made me love it more, bizarrely, was trying to get it in and out of orbit. Back when it was an absolute pig to get in and out of orbit. Uh, where you had to take off and land vertically because the thrusters just couldn't manage trying to take off um, at an angle. So you had to take off in vertical mode, uh, VTOL mode and basically just take off vertically um, until you were out of atmosphere. Uh, and that, to me, with a ship that big, feels exactly right. Landing was a, a, a horrific amount of counter vertical thrust and if you didn't do that enough you basically lost control of it and it plummeted out of orbit like uh, like uh, an absolute monster so yeah the reclaimer for all those things I actually like i want ships that are challenging to fly that feel chunky um so me flying it into a hammerhead the other day on stream notwithstanding really looking forward to, to getting the reclaimer and that's the chain and you will notice here what's really interesting is that a lot of my fleet fits into this. So I have a Vulture and a Connie Taurus. So, if I decide to step off at the Vulcan, I don't have that many bits to, you know, CCUs to buy back to build the chain up again. I've got to go from a Connie Taurus to a Vulcan, or I've got to go from a Connie Taurus to an Apollo Medivac, because the Star Fire Gemini, the Valkyrie, and the Reclaimer are all still there. So yeah, very different logic to choosing this ship, I feel, and the C1 versus things like the, uh, the Perseus, uh, a ship that I don't have my hands on, but I know I'm going to love. Uh, a ship like C1 I didn't think I was going to love, that I really actually enjoyed once I started flying it, and the Reclaimer just fitting that niche of, of kind of chilled, get some friends together, show them what Star Citizen's all about, that it isn't just a combat simulator, that it takes things that other games pay lip service to and makes them core parts of the game. I've also obviously gone through a vast amount of ships that aren't here. As I mentioned before, the Avenger Titan, the Gladius, the Hawk, the Arrow, the Sabre. There's been a whole raft of stuff that I've owned, including the raft, pun intended, I guess. But on screen at the moment, what I have is... Other ships that I'm interested in. Now, I actually have a CCU to the Galaxy in the Endeavour. The Galaxy was very much a target of opportunity at that point. However, given that it will be base building, I might just keep that one around, and that might be a potential stepping off point as well. And the Endeavour just strikes me as one of those ships, very much like the Hull, it's going to go up massively in price. So securing it at the price that it is at the moment was pretty damn important. Um, and, uh, you know, like I've said before, my only consideration is whether or not I can afford it. If the Endeavour goes up much more in price, it's going to be big question marks over that. I have bigger fish to fry. The Merchantman, again, looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I wasn't really that interested until they showed all that concept work, uh, and I'm hopefully going to secure a Banning Merchantman at close to the original price, um, but, you know, it, it, it's it's just such a good looking ship. I feel like it's something that I just want in my fleet as kind of the oddity. I don't know how much I'd use it, but I certainly want it. The Legionnaire and the Prowler, maybe no surprise that they're both in there together. I love the Prowler, don't want to pay the alien tax for it, but I absolutely love the ship itself. Um, and this is where some of the inconsistencies start to come in. I just feel like if I'm paying $400 for a ship, I want to buy the Reclaimer, not the Prowler. Um, but it's definitely something I will want to earn in-game. I love the tech, um, and I really enjoy that idea of it sneaking up on ships, getting close, and then people stepping out. It also has a very kind of Black Hawk feel to it, where it can open the air shields at the side, the wings deploy as sort of like a mobile cover and you can have people dropping out onto the tops of facilities or whatever and, and then the Prowler provides fire support from there. Yeah, not much more I can say about that one. 
Uh, the Legionnaire, I'm interested to see how that gameplay goes. That's why that ship is there. It's more an interest on the boarding, hacking gameplay loop than it is about the ship per se. But obviously, as the only ship that we know of that's going to be doing that actively at the moment, the Legionnaire's up there for me. The Vanguard Sentinel, because it's an electronic warfare ship, that obviously speaks to a lot of my experience as a naval officer. And, you know, I'd be very interested to see how they carry that out. CIG, if you want any tips on electronic warfare, hit me up. You know where I am. <laughs> if any of you ever watch my videos. Um, and then the Terrapin. I like that niche role again. I like that reconnaissance, getting out there, finding things, because I think that's a very understated part of the game. It's going to be vital to know where the enemy fleet is, what they're made up of, what they're going to be able to counter very well, what they're going to struggle to counter, so that you can hit them at the right time with the right forces and have maximum effect for minimum loss. Yeah, that stuff. Um, and the Terrapin being such a solo, uh, being a solo ship, uh, being able to achieve that yourself um, as one person and then return to the fleet or transmit that information back to the fleet. The Terrapin's something that I'm always going to have my eye on, I think, it's even if it's something that I earn in game. Look, I'm sure I don't need to invite any comments. Uh, you guys are going to let me know whether or not I'm right or wrong and what you think about certain ships. So make sure you drop those over in the comments. I will endeavour to get back to you. Other than that, have a really happy holidays. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.